When I tell y'all that religious manipulation is real, please believe me. Because if you're talking about a narcissist or a toxic person or whatever, they can easily use the Bible or whatever religious beliefs that you have against you. In this situation, that person pulled out the Bible and said, hey, look, a wife should do this and do this and do that. And that's why you should listen to me. You belong to me. I own you. And if you're a good Christian, then you're going to believe that. If you're dealing with a, nar a religious narcissist that could be a pastor or somebody that's high up in the church or whatever, they'll have you, instead of going to marriage counseling or going to see a therapist, they'll have you go see the pastor. And a lot of times in these churches, the pastor will be their best friend or very, very close to them, invite them to the cookouts or the barbecues or whatever. And that pastor will be like, look, marriage is tough. I know, look, I know you said you've been manipulated and, uh, and emotionally abused, but you know, give it to God because it's till death do us part. Not to manipulation or gaslighting or cheating or verbal and emotional or physical abuse to us does us part. You need to read your Bible and love your spouse correctly. Amen. What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome to another episode of A Narcissist Explains. I am self-aware narcissist Lee Hammett, the diagnosed narcissist known as mental illness that uses his platform to raise awareness for narcissistic personality, personality disorder, NPD, um, get more people into therapy and also validate the victims and survivors of said disorders. This series is dedicated to just making my TikToks longer, taking my YouTube shorts that y'all love so much, you love so much, you love so much, and making them longer. The one you just watched was a touchy subject, touchy, 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 religious manipulation by a narcissist. And this is gonna be like, if you are just a devout Christian that you just don't believe in, and it, it, I don't know, just buckle up. Let's talk about it. I speak 1906. Um, religious, manipulation, re religious manipulation is a real thing. A narcissist will, uh, narcissists love being in, uh, in positions of power that, and not even just positions of power, positions that make them automatic, they, they come with a good outlook on them, like a nurse, helper, doctor, helper, firefighter, helper, uh, police officer, helper, um, pastor of a church, good person. Just come, it just comes with that title. So narcissists love to get those positions, positions of power and authority and things like that, like that. Judges, lawyers, think positions like that. Real estate agents, you know, actors, positions of power that just kind of come with the, you know, a good, just a good image. You know, like I said, a doctor or somebody in the church, a position in the church, a deacon, a pastor, a reverend. You, you, you know, you run a youth choir. You're a minister. You know, I mean, you go in church and you hit the hand on the table like that. Ah, and you say God in Jesus' name and ah, and you get to be a narcissist in public and nobody will ever guess it. Ah, ah, you're in the church cheating on your wife. Ah, ah, and you just say it was the demons. Ah, and, ah, and you're just laying at the altar. Religious manipulation is real. I, like I said in that video right there, a uh, religious narcissist will have you, instead of going to therapy, like you, if you catch a narcissist cheating, that is, you know, devout Christian or whatever, um, instead of going to marriage counseling or them going to therapy, they'll have you go to church to go to the church and talk to one of their friends as a pastor or one of their friends as a deacon and things like that and have you submitting to them. Again, be a better wife, things like that. I talked to so many people who've gotten drugged to the church. Uh, men and women who have gotten drugged to the church after infidelities and things of that nature or some physical abuse and things of that nature have gotten drugged to the church in, in front of the pastor and the, had the story told and the pastor's just like, look, you this is to death do your part. Death ain't part of you. Y'all still alive talking to me. And you need to stay together <laughs> because that's what God wants. And you go home because the pastor told you to go home. You go home unhappy and abuse continues. Conscience clear, the narcissist has laid their sins at the altar in front of the pastor, and the pastor said it was okay. A religious narcissist will pull out verses of the Bible to, to justify their cheating, to justify their abuse, and things of that nature, and just use it because if you and, and, and it, because being religious just gives people that got that 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 mask of being a good person. Oh, I would have never thought that about him. He's a he's a good Christian. I would have never thought Sister Lois would have did something like something like that. She's in church every Sunday landing at the altar. She laying them sins at the altar because she was busting it open, twerking on Saturday, cheating. He laying his sins at the altar because he's over, there, over there clapping cheeks, cheating. Laying their sins at the altar, though, and it's all is forgiven. You know what? I'm not even going to talk to you. I'm going to just give it to God. I'm not going to talk to you about cheating. I'm not apologizing. The only person I should apologize to is God. If you can't deal with that, then you need to go, go to church. Pull out your Bible. Don't go to therapy. You need to go see a therapist. Pull out your Bible, things like that. 
because narcissists love to be religious because like I said, religious comes with that guise of just being a good person. It helps your reputation. Now, if you're a devout Christian, if you're in church every Sunday, smiling, helping the kids, doing that type of thing right there, you know, being a good husband in church, being a good wife in church, being a good father in church, being a good mother in church, being a good member of the church, donating, just putting stacks, putting stacks in the collection plate, stacks, stacks on deck, Patron on ice, putting stacks in the collection plate. You know what I mean? Doing stuff like that to make yourself seem like a good person, to make, to give the guise of a, being a good person. But behind this, behind closed doors, but outside the church, you're a terrible person. But nobody will ever guess it because every Sunday you're in there smiling. And then people write it, and people come to bat for you. Like, look, Brother Hammock is a devout Christian, ma'am. I don't think he would do anything like that. And if he did, it was the devil making him do it. Ain't that right, Brother Hammock? Like, yes, sir. Yes, brother. Yes, pastor. Stuff like that. And, uh, and religious, like I said, the, the religious thing is, is bigger than, than a lot of people make it, too. You mean the religious thing is deeper because a lot of times, like it's not just not Christian religion either. Because like a lot of people, like even I have uh, Muslim friends that are narcissistic, they could be very well be very narcissistic, and they, you know, they quote they. I, sometimes I know they they'd be misquoting the Quran to get women to be submissive to them and things like that. Because I got one of them that says like two women equal one man. And I was just like, and I recently read the Quran because he kept saying that he's like two women equal one man. We can have two women. Or whatever, not not even married, not not even married. You, I know you can marry more than one person, um, as long as you treat them treat them all equally. But religious ones, you know. But he was under the guise that he was telling he was telling girls that he can have two girlfriends and things like that because it's in the Quran. You mean two women equal one man? So I can have two two of y'all make one of me. But now, I, then I read the Quran and I read the, the the distinction behind that. So correct me if I'm wrong. It's like if you need a witness to a crime or to a trial or something like that to a debt. If you cannot f call two men as witnesses, but if you cannot find two men, uh, can I have one man come and call two women just in case one of the women forgets? That's why I was, I was like, uh, that made sense to me. He been using that line on people all for a very, very long time, and I haven't corrected him on that yet because I don't want him to know I'm onto him. You know, you correct a narcissist, they come on to you. They're just like, what? No, that's not what that means. They're like, no, I just read it. So y'all in the comment section, if I, if I misquoted that verse, uh, if I misquoted it, I think it's called a sura, sura. If I misquoted that, because I just finished the Quran very recently. Um, and I can see how people could use it to manipulate people. People could misconstrue lines and verses and things like that inside the Quran and just, you know, make things worse and, th and things of that nature. So I get, I get it. And like sometimes sometimes the narcissist is the narcissism is kind of masked into the culture. Sometimes the culture requires people to treat certain some treat certain people a certain way. Because I've talked to women and men of different you know, cultures and things like that. They're like, yeah, it's kind of in our in our creed or whatever to be treated this way. So yeah, stay. If you're gonna be with a religious person, you know, watch out for that stuff and protect yourself, y'all. Protect yourself against these religious narcissistic people because they they come in all races, shapes, and creeds and all the things like that. But anyways, y'all, thank y'all for tuning in to another episode. I know I rambled on a little bit. Um, I'll do a better episode on this later. Got to hit the road for my son's baseball game. It's Thursday. Um, anyways, y'all, truly appreciate y'all liking, subscribe, subscribe. Mental illness is out. Peace.